This week in our reflection series of Living My Dream Tokyo 2020, which was made possible by the National Lotteries Commission, we interview Lazan Kutsia and her two guides, Klaus and Erasmus, to explain their mutually beneficial partnership that led to their success in winning a bronze and silver Olympic medal. Rusval's Mai reflects on his disappointment and how he bounced back. And finally, Annika Pretorius, the Paralympian who reflects on how she was grateful for the ongoing South African support. Luzon Kutsia. I'm an athlete. I'm a Paralympic athlete. I do the 1,500 meters and the marathon. That's what I did at the Paralympic Games and I competed in the T11 classification. That is the classification for totally blind athletes. I did well. Um, I was very happy. Um, it's the first time I've medaled in eight years. Um, I got a silver medal and an African record in the 1,500 meters and in the marathon I got a bronze medal and a world record. But the reason for the bronze medal was it was a combined classification so there was T12s, which are ladies that can see better than I can. So we competed together in one classification, although there were stronger athletes and then weaker athletes in terms of vision, like myself. It was an emotional day for me. There was a point in the marathon where I, I had to try not to cry um, because we, we passed it, the third and the fourth lady in about, at about the 32K mark. And uh, we had 10 kilometers where, you know, it sunk in that we were gonna we were gonna be the bronze medalists, which we really didn't expect, um, being a very strong class and being a combined class. Um, but it, it was definitely, it was a very emotional journey for me. Klaus and I have been running together for six years now, and Estian and I have been running together for three years now. I think one of the most memorable moments for me was when Klaus and I was finishing the marathon and he experienced some cramps and I could actually motivate him as well and give back to him as well in one of the greatest races of our lives and one of the biggest opportunities that we would ever have. And to just, you know, not only him motivating me, but also me being able to motivate him um, to, to finish. Um, and we motivating each other in the last two or three kilometers was really amazing. It's very humbling to, to realize that someone like Luzon um, it's, it's a two-way relationship. It's not always just the guide giving the inspiration or, or the guidance or the assistance. Um, because in this race, uh, at about four k's to go, I got cramps. And, and she was the one that had to motivate me and say, okay, we're almost there, let's go. Um, we'll walk it out, we'll stretch it out, but we just keep on going. And that's the wonderful thing about our relationship. It's really, it's a mutual, it's a mutual trust and a mutual uh, relationship where not one is necessarily stronger than the other we are stronger together after the race i was actually thinking i was just i'm so glad that i didn't have a freezing response because in the last 400 when we passed the the fourth and the third place when we came into second estian said to me okay we're second now and you have to run um, and that last 300 i'm just so glad i didn't freeze up and i could manage to you know run it full out um, and end with a silver medal and it, it really at that point it felt unreal because I've never medaled before that that was my first ever international medal and after eight years of hard work and training that was a very powerful experience. Getting the silver medal and achieving that with the Zon uh, feels unreal. Um, it, it still hasn't sunk in yet. Um, it's something that, you know, it, it still sits on your desk, the, the physical mail. You look at it and you think, listen, wow, this is what we achieved. But, but I think the magnitude of, of actually going there and with Luzon, getting the result, it's just, it's just fantastic. To be honest, I, I never felt alone. Um, we, we are a family, Klaus, Estian and I, and I think we, yeah, we're almost like family to each other and I think we can we have the ability not to make, not to feel alone when we're together. The Sports Trust, um, I also think they're definitely starting to feel like family now. I never feel with them that um, I cannot reach them. It's it's nice to have that contact and that backing. Um, and just to know, you know, that somebody has your back. So for that, I would really love to thank them and, and to just say, 
that I, I really enjoyed starting my journey with them and that I hope it can continue in the future. I also enjoyed working with the NLC and the NLC is, I think, they've been one of the most instrumental parts of the athlete's journey up to the games and even post games. So to them, also just a great thank you and a great shout out to, to what they do for athletes and to what they do for sport in the country because they don't just do it for, for us, they do it for, they, they really cover from development upwards and, and that's what's great about the NLC. I went into Tokyo as one of the favorites, but unfortunately things didn't always turn out the way it's supposed to, like I said. So getting from, from Tokyo, coming back into the European season, I wanted to call my season. I wanted to say, okay, the season is done, this is done. But my coach, um, Jenny King, will told me, okay, let's just go for it. Um, let's make the best of what we got and all the needs that we still have left. And then we went into the remaining of the season and we produced some good quality performances. I got the silver in, in Got a silver in Brussels and I got a bronze in the, uh, the Zurich Diamond League final. So for me, that's a major confidence booster, especially after a disappointing Olympic Games. Preparing for Olympic Games is not just a year before. It's always a four-year cycle. But the 2021 Olympic Games, we had a five-year cycle. Um, so we had loads of preparation. But unfortunately, with South African athletes, we weren't able to... We weren't able to um, to train the way the rest of the world was training. We were always restricted from training. We were always held on lockdown. We were always had curfew and all that type of things. We, the rest of the world, their athletes, so some of the organizations, some of their sporting organizations, federations, they made sure that the athletes go out and train because they know the bigger picture. And the bigger picture for them was performing the Olympic Games. So where for us as South Africans, we didn't have that good preparation in order to go forward and all this also going into the Games with so much confidence and so much, so much motivation, you know. But at the end of the day, we know, we always knew what we wanted. Um, like I said, it's been a five-year cycle. Unfortunately, I didn't make the final, but I was happy. I was smiling, but at the same time, it was it was hard. To be honest, I was I was extremely angry with myself. Uh, I was extremely angry with my team because, as being a track and field athlete, it's not just you alone. People think it's alone, but you have a tired team behind you who supports you, make sure that every single thing is right. And that is from my physios, Basir Mohammed, to my bio, Alin Hunter, to my coach. Um, Jennifer King, well, all the guys played a significant role in me having to perform and for the entire year every single thing was so perfect but unfortunately on the last jump it didn't work out the way it was supposed to and after the last jump I knew okay this was it so my Olympic Games stops here so now it's time to, to head back and watch the rest of the competition so the way I felt after my last jump I felt devastated I felt heartbreaking Two days later, I had to fly out to, to Brussels Diamond League and to compete there. But I managed to get a second place in Brussels. So that also gave me my confidence boost to heading into um, Zurich, the Diamond League final, where I knew I had an opportunity to win the Diamond League final. But I, I, I came in third. And it's always a medal. Um, the most important thing is um, standing on the podium, knowing that your name is on the podium and by, behind your name or in front of your name is, is the South African flag and that means so much, to, not just to myself but also the public and the people who's been supporting me throughout the way. And with the National Lottery Commission and every single person every and what they've put into us, now we have to perform and now we've executed. Um, that means a lot. My message to South Africa is I know we we, dis we disappointed uh, the country um, because we as athletes we didn't perform the way we wanted to wanted to perform. I knew you guys give it your all in terms of your supporting structure, in terms of what you guys have set out. And the most important thing is that you, just, you guys just have to keep with us, keep sticking, keep believing. Because at the end of the day we will definitely make a prize proud when it counts once again. Yo, for me it was just amazing to be there in Tokyo, to be in the village, to be with a team and yeah, to race. I think racing um, against the best in the world um, is just an opportunity to challenge me and for me to challenge them to be the best that we can be. And that was exactly it, I think. Yeah, the way it went in my races, um, I can really just confirm that <laughs> yeah and I think with a lead up I um, was really challenging I three months before the before the games I could still not run um, because of a, a foot injury that I um, 
got earlier the year and yeah to run a personal best in the final the biggest race of my life I couldn't have asked for more. Yeah, my aspirations going into the games was really to just um, improve on my personal best. I think to get as close as possible to um, that 11 second mark is, is still a goal for me. And yeah, that was definitely what I wanted to get out of it. I think the main thing that I've learned from these games is really to trust, yeah, to trust, um, to trust my body, to trust the preparation that I've put in, to trust God most of all and um, yeah when you run and you r trust then you run then you don't force so I really learned to trust and not force and when it, when you sprint um, you wouldn't think so because you think sprinting is all about force but actually um, I've run my PB with staying relaxed and trusting my body so yeah that is the main thing that I've learned and I really am excited to take what this thing that I've learned into my my races to come to hopefully break that that 11 second barrier that's my next goal I'm excited to get back to training I think it um, there's definitely gonna be quite big changes that we that I'm going to make in my training and my approach now thinking back that the games is over now yeah. to reflect and look what my approach was going in and how that re realized yeah. my message to the South African public is that yeah I really appreciated everyone's love and support in through the games even though there wasn't spectators I never felt um, a lack of support and a lack of people backing me to the NLC thank you so much I mean like if we if I didn't have the support financial support to um, just focus on my athletics then this wouldn't have been possible and I probably in the tough time with my injury I probably might have given up if I didn't know that I have this massive backing from um, the NLC so I really really want to thank them so so much off the bottom of my heart my whole life I wanted to be a, a um, professional athlete and this time is the first time that I actually felt like a professional athlete so thanks to the NLC for that kind of support it's really next level the Sports Trust acts as an implementation partner to their trustees partners and corporate donors and were instrumental in delivering Living My Dream campaign on behalf of the National Lotteries Commission.